In the last recording, we figured out how to create a grid for our calendar, uh, but we didn't populate it with the days or the dates, um, the numerical dates for the month. And so the purpose of this video is to, to do that and uh, put those dates in the right spots. Unfortunately, in the canvas, there is no function available to us that allows us to draw text. We can draw shapes like lines, circles, rectangles, etc., but we can't draw text like ones, twos, a, b's, that kind of stuff. And so what we're going to have to do in order to get the numbers on the calendar is to actually create text labels instead. You've made text labels before using the label widget in the design toolbox, uh, but I don't want to have to drag 31, you know, different text labels on here and give them all numbers and, and do all that. That's going to be pretty tedious to do and to place them all manually by hand. That's not something that is going to make for an easy um, creation of this app. I want to be able to do that more programmatically. And what I mean by that is to do that with code. So <clears throat> what we're going to do is come back to the code and we're going to create those text labels using code. Okay, and so you can see I've clicked on the UI controls, and um, because I want this, these labels to always be in existence, I don't want them to be made every time we draw the calendar. I'm going to do that up here in the main, outside of any function, just um, in the main area of the code. So how do I create a text label? Well, there is a function called text label, okay, and uh, it will create a text label given an ID and a text. But I want to create, essentially, I want to create 31 text labels, right? So do you think I want to do this 31 times and then name these things? No, that, that doesn't seem like a good, efficient way to do this. So what I'm going to do is recognize that what I'm actually doing is the same thing over and over again. The only thing that's changing is this ID and the text that goes along with that text label. And so whenever I'm doing something repeatedly, that's a prime candidate for a loop. Okay, so we're going to write a for loop here that uh, loops from 1 because that's the first date, up to and including 31, because that's the last possible date, and adding one each time. Now inside this loop, what I'm going to do is create that text label. So text label, the ID I want to identify you know, uh, be able to like move these things and um, arrange them individually. So I need to create an ID that changes for each one of them. So I'm going to call these date labels maybe. So I'll call this like date. <clears throat> um, it needs to be in quotes. But I can't just call it date because then they'll all be called date and I won't be able to refer to them individually. So I'm going to add on, I'm going to concatenate uh, the the value of i. So the first date will be date one, and then date two, and then date three, right? Now the text of that label will simply just be i itself, right? I want the first label to be a one, and then a two, and then all the way up to 31. So i is going to be the text itself, and now I'm creating these 31 labels, okay? If we run this, reset it and run it, uh, I think it's just going to, yeah, it's just going to like create them all, right? and it kind of arranged them so that they weren't over top of each other or anything, but they're not where we want them to be. They're just kind of up there at the top of the screen. Still, that was really good. I was just able to create 31 text labels and, and get them to show up on the screen. Okay, so that's our first step is just simply creating those labels. Now we want to um, actually move them to the right spots. And so we're going to do that uh, in the draw calendar function itself when we draw the calendar. So we've, up here we've already drawn the grid and so we should kind of identify that. So draw calendar grid. And now what I want to do is place those labels. Okay? So I'll put myself a little comment that I'm placing the date labels. All right, now this gets tricky because I need to know what day of the week a month starts on, right? So I can't just assume that this first block is the one because maybe January 2019 started on a Tuesday, right? And so we're going to have to figure that out. Um, but let's leave that for now. Let's for now just assume that 
every month does start on the first block and we'll kind of go from there. So what am I going to do? Well, I'm going to loop through each of these labels and place them. Right? So again, this notion of a repetition where I want to be doing the same thing over and over again. I want to place the one somewhere, then I want to place the two somewhere, then I want to place the three somewhere, each with a small change. So because we're repeating that action, this again seems like a good opportunity to use a loop. So we'll say for var i equals, um, actually let's make it kind of clear, we'll say for date equals one, it doesn't matter what we call this variable, we could call it i, just a looping variable. I'm calling it date to remind myself, hey, this is a date that we're dealing with. While the date is less than or equal to 31, let's say, um, add one to the date. Okay. Now what do I want to be doing here is I want to be changing the position of the date label. Okay. Um, so how are we going to do that? I need to know what row and column I'm on. Um, so let's let's create variables for that too. Because I need to keep track, you know, every time we put a label down, I need to move over one and move over one and move over one. And when I get to the end, I need to move down a row and then move over one. So it's kind of a lot to keep track of there. We need to know what row we're on. We'll start that, uh, make a variable for that, row zero. Make a variable for the column. Um, we'll make that start at zero. So I'm starting at row zero, column zero, that's up here. And uh, I'm going to just kind of like move over every time. And when I get far enough, I'm going to move down, move down a, a row, right? All right, so let's, let's see if we can kind of incrementally get this where we want it to be. So how do we change the position of a text label? Well, there's a function called set position, okay? And um, I don't expect you just to know these. I do expect you to kind of look through the toolbox and see what's possible. This, you want to consider this toolbox to be kind of the set of possible things. There are actually some things that are possible that aren't even in this toolbox that we'll look at soon too, but this is how we get familiar with the code as we, we see what's possible and we try it out. So we're going to set the position. Okay, what are we setting the position of? Well, we're setting the position of the first, in this case, the first date label, the first uh, labeled it that one, right? Well, what did we call that? Well, we created that up here. It was called date one, right? So I need to say date, right? The word date plus the value of the date that I'm on, which is stored in the variable that I've just called date, right? Maybe that's confusing. Maybe you want to make this I, whatever. I don't, I don't uh, care what you call that loop variable. I'll just leave it as date. So I'm saying date plus the number that is being held in the variable date. Okay, so that's the item I'm changing. <clears throat> what do I need next? I need its x and y coordinates. Okay, well, um, its x coordinate is going to be, I'm not sure, I'm not really sure yet, but I know that it's going to move over by the width of the square, right? And if we think back, what did we do um, when we were making those lines for the squares, we were multiplying x by 43, right? So each column was 43 pixels wide. So I'm going to see, well, you know, when x is 0, this starts at a 1. So let's say we're going to say 1 plus the column I'm on times 43. Okay, so the column I'm on is 0 so right now, so that's going to be 0, we'll be right at 1. I don't know if that's right, I might have to play with it, okay? The y value is similar, right? And the y value uh, was also increasing by 43 every time we drew a line, right? You can see that right here. And I added 1, okay? So let's do that again. We'll say row times 43 plus 1, right? Now. Uh, this is going to cause us a problem. I'm not going to say what it is yet. Maybe you'll pick up on it, um, but let's try this. And I think that's all we need to do there. Set the position. Okay. And uh, every time we set the position or every time this date increases by one, we're going to add one to the column. So let's add one to the column. So column plus plus. That way I'll move over by 43 pixels every time. Let's run this and see what happens. This, there's going to be a couple problems with this. Okay, so first of all, my values are too high, right? They're way up at the top of the screen and not in the grid. They're also a little too far to the left, 
looks like, so I'm going to have to add some. And they only go up to eight. So three problems we got here. So let's let's fix the X issue first. Looks like maybe, let's try to maybe add, I don't know, five pixels or something, four pixels. See if that's, that's good. I don't really know um, what, what that should be. Um, maybe I could, uh, yeah, we'll just offset that, see what that does. Eh, still not really enough. So the issue here is that we've got, uh, it's causing both the X and the Y to be off, is that we're confusing our coordinates, okay? These coordinates for the set position are setting the position on the screen. But the coordinates that we used when we were drawing the grid were used in the line function, and that's a canvas function. And so these X and Ys are relative to the canvas, which is here, not relative to the screen. So when I say like row times 43, well that's zero, you know, row right now is zero times 43 plus one. Well, I'm only one pixel down on, from the top of the screen. But when I do that over here and I say Y times 43 plus one, I'm starting from the top of the canvas, which is right here. So my coordinates are two different systems of uh, position here, and that's that's why we're getting these issues with the pixels being off, so or with the numbers being in the wrong place. So I need to somehow match that up, right? So I'm going to add some things under here. So let's let's fix that by creating uh, sort of an offset variables for x and y. So I'm going to call the first one x offset, and I'm going to make that equal to the position of the canvas, the x position of the canvas. Um, and then plus however much I want to be inside those boxes, right? So uh, how do I get the position of the canvas? Well, that's a property of the canvas. So there's a get property. I want to get the property of canvas one. Which property do I want to get? I want to get its X position, okay? That's going to tell me, essentially, what this value is. It's 10, okay? It's 10. So I'm going to come into the code, right? That's my offset. Now that's going to get me right on the edge. I don't want to be right on the edge. I want to be a little bit in from that. So let's, let's again, let's try five. Okay. And now that offset, that's what I want to add to my column times 43. Okay. Let's try to run that, see what we got. Okay. Now I can see how the one seems to be a little bit more where I like it. We're going to do the same thing for the Y, a Y offset. Well, I want that to start at the Y position of the canvas. So I'm going to get the property of the canvas again, but this time I'm going to get the, the Y property. And I'll add 5 again, see if that's good. And we will add the Y offset to the row calculation. We run this now. Hey, that looks pretty good. Uh, 1 through 7 look good, and now I still have this problem where I don't go to the second row. But my positioning looks pretty nice, so I'm going to leave that as it is. And I'm going to now check the column issue, right? So when we get to the end, I want, what do I want to have happen? I want to move down a row and I want to set column back to zero. So I need to detect that, right? I need to say, you know, if the column, what if the column is equal to seven, so we use triple equals for testing equality, uh, equal to seven, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Well, that's bad. 7's off. Column number 7 is really the 8th column. Then what I need to do is a couple things. I need to add 1 to the row, so I'm on the next row, and I need to set the column back to 0. Okay? That'll move me down and start me back over. Let's see if that did it. I don't know. Great! Now all the dates seem to be in the right place, and they're populating the calendar nicely. Okay, um, That's how we kind of want to do things graphically in order to get those numbers in the right places. And if you're doing something kind of similar with a grid, um, that's kind of one way we can, we can do that. In the next video, we're going to actually get those in the right place by looking at how dates work in JavaScript.